again, everyone. Welcome to part one of our Engaging Online Participants webinar series, 10 Tips to Getting the Most Out of Your Online Focus Group. I just want to go over a few logistical notes before we get started. There's two different ways to communicate with us throughout the webinar, the chat box and the Q&A box. If you could please use the chat box for all technical issues and the Q&A box for any questions related to the content of the webinar, that would be great. With that, I'd like to introduce our speakers. Zoe Dowling is our SVP of research here at Focus Vision. She's an eclectic blend of researcher, technologist, sociologist, and marketer, and she uses her extensive research expertise to help clients best apply Focus Vision's te technological solutions. We also have Michael Crane, VP of Global Operations, also at Focus Vision. Mike has a strong passion for technology and problem solving, and he began his career with Focus Vision over 10 years ago to oversee the launch of Focus Vision interview. At this time, our panelists are going to turn off their cameras and dive right into the, the discussion. Zoe, would you like to get started? I will do. Good morning, good afternoon. Hello, everybody from wherever you're joining from. I'm very excited to have you here today and also to have uh, Mike Crane uh, with, with me, um, who's going to be giving a hands-on look at what our interview platform looks like. So we're looking today to connect both best practices for, for you know, if, if, if this is your first time starting out on an online focus group, you know, it can feel like, where do, where do I start? What should I know? What's the same from face-to-face uh, face and, and what's different? So that's really what uh, I wanted to do and, and kick off the conversation uh, here today. And then, and then Mike's going to take some of the best practices I'm talking about. And he's actually going to show what that looks like within our, within our online uh, platform. So um, that's, that's the flow of what we're going to be covering. I'm uh, also going to be having a Q&A. So please do use that Q&A box. Um, I'll be taking a good look at it as we go through and we'll have some time at the end. And I hope you find this is a, an informative, helpful session. So with that, let me dive in. We are in, we're in a world where, where we don't really know where things are. Um, everything's changed so quickly. And, and this has led to, to um, a lot of the, the, the research projects that we're doing uh, face to face is, is no longer a, an option as, as we're right in the middle of COVID 19. And so, what are our options? And the beautiful thing is, is just like, just like you're joining uh, us here today through, from all over the world, I think I saw Brazil uh, has joined in. And um, that's the beauty of online research and the ability for us to connect with people uh, from, from their homes to, uh, from our homes to their homes and vice versa. So, we have lots of different tools at our disposable, disposal. Uh, in order to speak and connect with people. We're going to be talking about webcam focus groups today, um, but let's not think about some other good options around online communities and mobile ethnographies, and of course, uh, the wonderful survey. And that's what this webinar series is, the first in a series of three, that's going to be talking about these three different ways of connecting, talking about focus vision solutions and, and how we can help you uh, answer the questions that need to be answered uh, during this time. And of course, I think what's incredibly important and something that is near and dear to my heart always, and something that I believe is, is absolutely imperative today is we need to, to remember our best practices. We need to remember that the fundamentals of what we're doing, because this is uncharted territory. We are speaking to people that, uh, depending on what your, your research study is, it could be potentially quite sensitive through health issues, through financial issues, uh, through just a change in, in people's worlds. And so we, we don't know how best to respond to this because nobody has ever been through it before. But I do know and I strongly believe that falling back on best practices and, and when we conduct this research is really going to help us. So with that, why, why online focus groups or online one-to-one uh, -one interviews? Well, it's very much this anytime, anywhere conversations. As I've already said, from, from your homes to theirs across the country, even the globe. And I think that, that that's, that's the beauty of it. The next piece, I think, goes hand in hand with this. We need to be privacy aware. We need to protect our participants. So the, the one thing that I urge um, people to think about is, I know budgets are exceptionally tight. I know that we want to do things quickly. And so there are a lot of free tools that we can use. Just think about the, the privacy considerations, thinking about how, if that, you know, our, uh, you don't want anything to be installed on a person's computer. You don't want um, a recording to be interrupted. And you certainly need to make sure that that recording is securely uh, hosted, that it's stored in a good location. 
Um, these are things that we have as a, not just a moral and ethical obligation to our participants, but also there's legal obligations. If you're in Europe, the GDPR. In the US, there's the California uh, CCPA Privacy Act that, that just came out. Um, so th these are things to think about, and that is one reason why I, I, I strongly believe in, and not just because I work for a research technology company, I, I say that very sincerely, we need to think about what tools are we using. And uh, for the last one, that, um, that, it's, that it's flexible. Um, this is a very sort of flexible capabilities that is not the same as face-to-face. -face. I'm not going to, to be suggesting that it is. At the same time, um, there's, we're going to lose some things by not being face-to-face, -face, but you're also going to gain things. So, you know, it's a bit of a balance. And on the whole, we can still speak to one another. Um, so we're having these conversations, but there's also the ability to do things like sharing uh, screens and, and flexibilities, uh, um, uh, markup screens, card sort exercises, polls, and so on. So, so Mike's going to, to demo all of that for us a minute, in a minute. Um, so it's just going to help us think about what can you do? How can we transition from face to face? Um, how can you, uh, you know, use the tools that are available within, with a platform like Interview? So that's what we're, we're going to be covering. Let's think about best practices uh, to kind of put this in some sort of context. If this is your first uh, time doing an online uh, focus group, or maybe it's just not something you do regularly. So how do you get the most out of your webcam conversations? And it is, uh, in some ways, it can feel, and I think it is to a degree, uh, straightforward enough. But there's definitely steps that you can take to really get the most out of these sessions. What we don't want is there's this kind of idea. As you see this picture of this boy and he's kind of projecting things out and we, 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 we want conversations that, um, that, that are interactive, but sometimes it just feels like we're trying to, to engage and interact, but it's not working out so well. Because what we're really striving for is, is this idea of an intimate conversations where we connect, we, we share, uh, I'm just going to say secrets because as, as I look at this picture of the boys, you can just imagine that's what they're doing. But you, you share um, heartfelt thoughts and, and you really connect with one another. And so this is where you as the moderator coming, comes in and understand the, the, the impact that you can have on the conversation. And sometimes that means sharing as appropriate, you know, our views and perspectives um, to really build trust and connect. Again, I think that's very similar to what we do in the online world. It's just, uh, sorry, the offline world. It's just important to remember to do that when we're on the online world as well. And we have to work a little bit harder to build that rapport. A rapport. And this is something that we'll, we'll talk about shortly. So let's dive into the tips. Tip one. This, this may seem very elementary. This is something that you want to be thinking about before you, you start the group. It's something that is, I think, especially important from the moderator so that people can see you clearly and, and really you know, try and build that connection with you. But it's also something we want to, as we recruit people coming in and, and think about it, you know, what kind of lighting setup they have so that you can see them as well. You can take those facial expressions, those body language cues, and vice versa for, for our other participants. You know, they can all see each other. And, and again, it just helps that build that connection. So uh, this isn't the worst example I've ever seen, but, but you know, when you've got light behind you, it does make it a little bit harder to, to see the person, um, just you're getting a much brighter contrast. And so what you really want to be achieving is having light sources that are coming sort of directly onto your face, uh, maybe from the ceiling, maybe from a desk lamp uh, in, in front of you, and just trying to make it so that you know, you're as clear and crisp uh, as can be. So lighting is an, is an important one. It takes a little bit of preparation beforehand, um, but it fortunately is, is an easy one to try, and get, to try and get right. Now thinking about the webcam. So ideally we've got a situation where, where you're, you're nicely lit. And, and I know this isn't particularly natural, but the next step in building connection is actually to look directly at the webcam while speaking. It helps people feel that you're speaking directly to them. You're kind of looking at them. And, you know, if we take this first image here, we can see somebody's looking off to the side. And it easily happens. You know, we, we, many of us have dual screens and the camera's on one and the virtual room, the browser's on another. So you might be kind of looking to gauge the reactions of somebody else. So hence why looking away. 
it's also not easy to 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 you know be be staring at a, a, a webcam you know the sort of the little camera area because it doesn't feel natural we also look to people's faces for feedback as we're speaking so and and i will say it's also tricky to keep up throughout the session uh, particularly when you're paying attention to to participants to gauge their reactions taking the visual cues that i that i've mentioned with all that said it is good practice to to maintain webcam eye contact at the outset as introductions are happening i think right at the beginning that's really important it's a good time to say hey i'm here i'm looking directly at you so as those introductions opening discussions take place and then it's good to come back to it as any summary recaps or topic changes you know those moments when you're really looking to, to lean in and engage with them and i actually wish you could see me here because i'm leaning in and looking at the webcam and i know we turned them off but but that is something that i'm doing now um, and that's something though the power of video is that you can see people and you can see the engagement and that goes both ways between you and your your online uh, uh research uh, your participants and and them as they see you as the moderator and just an example here of you know, you can see the difference when somebody is looking straight into the camera. Now, moving on to our third tip, taking time to build rapport at the outset. Again, I know this is kind of a one-on-one for, for our focus group anyway. It's something that we do as we, we're entering the facility, you're meeting people, just, you know, mingling maybe outside uh, the actual room as people are looking to go in, maybe grabbing a cup of coffee or a snack as it's there. So we, we, we often have these sort of small interactions, one-on-one -on -one interactions as well as uh, with people as we're, we're just getting the, the group started. And of course, as everybody comes in and they're setting, uh, finding their place and setting things up, you know, there, there's all of these small pieces to help, to help build a connection, even small connections as, as the face-to-face -face group gets started. Now, of course, with online, we don't have that. You know, it's people just kind of suddenly enter into this um, this virtual environment and, and we're right there sitting at the table, so to speak. So that's why taking time to build that rapport, to have a group warm up is, is very important uh, in an online group. You know, perhaps that's engaging in a topic or an activity that will connect everybody within the group. And that, that's just gonna, whatever that is, is really just going to depend upon what, what, what you're gonna be talking about, what's appropriate. So it could be a simple icebreaker. It could be related to the project at hand. It could be something completely, you know, a little bit more out there, off the wall. Again, it just depends on the group. Who, who do you have in the room? Uh, what age, um, socioeconomic background do they come from? What are the cultural differences? Who, who, what, what's going to resonate? What's going to spark that kind of interactivity? And, you know, so it's just being, being you know, situational for, for what's going on. I will say that no matter how short your time is, even if it's a 15 minute interview and, and I would say, hey, you know, with, this is the beauty with online. Don't be shy about just saying, you know what, I have this idea, uh, particularly in today's world where we, we don't really know. And the only way we're going to know is to ask. So let's take 15 minutes um, to do uh, for an interview to, to speak to somebody, to share an idea. And maybe you want to do three or four of those. And so within the course of an hour, an hour and a half, you, you've managed to speak to a few people bounce off ideas and see whether something's resonating or not or whatever it may be so i will say you know think think about let's start to think about things maybe di differently and this is what i was saying about this being flexible conversations anywhere anytime um so long story short though is that you know you can do really short one-to-one uh, -one interviews and think about those but no matter how short your time is take a few minutes to build that rapport find a way to connect because it's really going to greatly aid that conversation we can be so cautious about people's time that we can rush in. And maybe this is something that, that, that I'm, I'm particularly full foul of. I, I am exceptionally time conscious. If I've said I'm, I want 15 minutes, I really mean it's 15 minutes. And if anything, I'm looking at 14 minutes to wrap up. So I do often just jump straight in. However, the interaction, the, the building rapport, it, it's, it's the basis for a social relationship between you and your interviewees between you and the, and the other focus group uh, participants. And so without that rapport, even the best phrase questions can fall flat and you don't get the kind of the answers that, that you're looking for. They, they become brief, they're uninformative. So just a real plea to really think about building rapport, uh, no matter the time that you've got set up. All right, moving on, guiding people through the conversation. 
So the next thing that I think is helpful, um, and this is kind of going a little bit of a cadence, like, you know, how do you start? We started with lighting. We thought about looking at the camera. We thought about building rapport. Now it's like, okay, we're about to go into to the main set. And I think I found what's helpful to do is to bring the conversation to people, to really let them know where this time is going to take them. Again, it's a little bit different. I mean, not so different from our face-to-face -face group. Again, there's, there's the same principles going on. But it is kind of good to kind of take a pause and to say, all right, so we're in. Uh, we're, we're, we know that we're going to have a good conversation here. And so um, this is what we're looking to, to achieve. And, and if you can, again, it depends about the nature of the project, but the, the general research goals. If you haven't outlined what your role is and what you do as part of the research as a whole and also for your role as the moderator, this is a great time to do it as now. Uh, even if you've personally recruited and scheduled uh, the person you're interviewing, they may still be uncertain about the purpose of the interview. They may have forgotten. So it's a good time to kind of reiterate all of these things. I always think that it's a good idea to pause for questions. If there's anything immediate that people want to ask, uh, just, just again, we want people to talk, we want people to, to share uh, their thoughts, but also any questions that, that, they're, that they've got mulling around. So good idea to pause. And, and then as far as you can, and as far as it makes sense, maybe just outline the flow of the conversation, what you'll be talking about. And then finally, uh, just I think it's always good to reiterate privacy, consent will have been given, you'll have the forms, um, but remind them how the data is going to be used and if there's recording to how it be used and so on. So just remaining, uh, keeping best practice going throughout. All right, so moving on, screen share. And this is something Mike's really going to, to show us the power of what we can do within, within a platform like, like uh, interview. We know that, you know, we don't just have to rely on the webcams. We know that, that, that screen share, even on, on just the most basic level, we can share screens. We can use it uh, in a multiple different ways and it is extremely versatile. You don't need to just show uh, 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 an image and the once be done or the flow of the conversation. There's a lot that you can do or, or you might think about it just, oh, I'm going to show stimuli such as an ad and receive feedback on it. It can be used in multiple ways uh, throughout the conversation. So just, um, and we will hear a lot more about this, but just as, a, as some ideas, you know, you could use it as part of the opening rapport or warm up questions. You know, show an image and ask what it conjures, you know, or caption this. Uh, and, and that could be, if, if humor is appropriate, that could be something fun to do. You can show the outline of the, the conversation on the screen as you talk through the discussion flow. Um, you don't want to use, lose that personal connection, so you don't want people to be scra share, sorry, staring at the screen. A little bit of a tongue twister there. You don't want to be uh, having them just focusing on the screen only. You do want to sort of be using that webcam to your advantage as well. But sometimes having it on, having it off, moving around, it helps break up the flow. It helps refocus things. So it, it can be good. And then it could, uh, another thing to think about for screen share uh, and showing an image, it could be something that's more emotional, abstract. It can set the scene. It can put people into a particular frame of mind. So I think that's just a few ideas. There's, there's just, you know, the, the, the world is our oyster in terms of what we could show. It's, it's only limited by for how we're thinking about it. So I would definitely encourage you to think very creatively about how you can use screen share. Now into some of the logistics and, and how do we get people to, to participate? You know, hopefully they're, they're engaged, but we don't just want them engaged in the conversation. We want them to have their say. We want to hear their, their thoughts, their opinions, their, their feelings, emotions, uh, and so on. So within, I found certainly within webcam interviewing and focus group that there does need to be a little bit more structure applied to running the conversation because we don't have those, you know, real strong uh, physical cues. You know, when somebody wants to speak in a group in a face-to-face -face scenario, they normally lean forward, you know, physically that becomes quite, quite obvious that, that they're, they're engaging in that way. The kind of the rules of conversation as it is face-to-face. -face. So we don't have that obviously in, in online groups. Uh, but so what we need is the moderator to, to really uh, take a bit more of a structured approach. Um, I, I try for turn taking. Uh, it really does apply and allow everybody to have an opportunity to have their say. It helps minimize uh, people talking over one another. Sometimes it does happen and sometimes it's not a terrible thing because people are engaged and, and they want to have a sort of a, a fiery back and forth. Um, 
but we want to make sure that that's all within balance because we also make sh want to make sure that there are people that aren't just sitting there quietly, that aren't contributing because they don't sense the opportunity. So I kind of like to call people out. I like to say, Beth, it's your turn to speak or, or what do you think about that idea? Okay, let's next hear from, from Amy. So that's something that, that I like to do. I don't like to do it sort of in a set. I'm going to go around the room and everybody has their same takes, you know, their same turn, like they come second every time. Um, I think there has to be more, more variety and spontaneity. And, and so they're not just waiting for their turn because they know that it's coming at that set point. So varying the order, um, but just trying to keep it, again, it's not a natural situation. Um, but as you get into the flow of it, it, it does actually become more, more understandable and it just gives a bit of the structure that I, that I found really is necessary with, with an online group. Following this kind of idea of structure, you know, so how do we get people when they do have a comment that they do want to interject? Again, we don't have that kind of that, that direct eye contact that can show you that they're, they're really looking to have their, their say, that they're looking to speak, um, or that they're move, leaning forward to say, yep, I'm next. So that's why just raising hand, or if you've got another creative way of doing this, that, then great. But, you know, saying if you've, if you've got a comment, you want to be speak next, then, then raise your hand. Um, and that means that you can, you as the moderator can see, oh, look, Rachel wants to have a say, and then also Seth wants to come in. So that's something that's going to help you to, to, again, manage the flow of the conversation as it's going on. Uh, and that's something that you would outline in your rules of engagement that's, that's happening uh, at the beginning of the, the session. This is how we're going to do. We're all going to make sure that everybody speaks. And if you want to jump in, and I certainly encourage you to do so, but, but do so by raising your hand. All right, moving on to, uh, we've only got a couple more to go, and then we're going to go into to Mike's demo. Um, but just, just wrapping things up. So, so what are the things not to forget? This might feel incredibly straightforward. Oh, Zoe, of course we're going to probe. That's what we do. We're, moderate, uh, we're qualitative researchers. We're moderators. Of course we probe. And absolutely, I, I just put this in here because there can be a lot to manage. If this is the first time that you're doing it um, and you're just getting used to the, kind of the technology and um, having the screen share, having, having to look at people's the, the, sort of the webcam to try and gauge what's going on, there's a lot to think about. So that's why I just kind of added this in here. You know, don't, don't forget. Um, just use your, all the tricks and tools that are, that are in your, your toolbook anyway and play back what you've heard from that individual or the group. Inviting feedback, you know, always helps, as we know, to ask for more, more specifics, more on how they felt, more on what they meant. And so it's just digging into to every active listening technique at your disposal. You know, wow, tell me more about that. Oh, that's really interesting. Um, and of course, my favorite, our favorite, why? Why don't you like being in the bus? Why don't you like grocery shopping? Um, again, I've said this may be pretty obvious, but uh, you know, it's, it, it's good to just, just, again, not feel that we've got to race through what we've got there um, because this feels more structured, but to be able to flow in and, and have a bit more of the conversation and dig a bit deeper. Now, silence. It, uh, it can be one that we all feel afraid of, and, and even in an in-person room we might feel a little bit uncomfortable but you know we're all there and so we're all interacting with one another so that that silence doesn't feel quite so daunting it can feel even more daunting on on a, a, a webcam focus group that said i'm going to say don't be afraid of it there is absolutely no need to fill every moment sometimes it's really useful to have that silence to, to slow down. And you can hear it by, my, by me really thinking about it. I've slowed down quite a bit, which is probably a good thing. It gives participants and yourself a moment to reflect, to pause for any additional thoughts or, or transition from one topic to the next. So I would say that silence is a really, it's a good thing. Just, just a pause. Um, take the moment to think about, have I covered everything that I need to do? And on, that's on your side and on your participant's side, they might be thinking, Oh, hmm, that was, uh, you know, just putting the pieces of the conversation that's been uh, together and they may have some additional thoughts. So that leads me to the, the last tip that I have, and, and that is this idea of one more thing. Always offer the opportunity for, for others to add comments once everybody else has had their say. So when you're moving, and I think this is particularly as you're moving from, from one kind of section area, one big broad topic area to the next, always have the opportunity to say, you know, 
is there is there anything else you've thought of that you that you've we've not covered is there anything else you'd like to add no matter how random it is anything else you'd like to share um, and so on and i think that one more thing i think very much tying it to to a little bit of that intentional silence a little bit of pausing uh, you can find some some great things unfold here so with that um the last thing that i would like to say about um just online focus groups and in fact just doing research at any time but particularly in this time you know it is important to iterate it is important to think about building upon the knowledge that we have and this is just you know i think that there's an opportunity we to to say mm, i don't really know the answer to this broad question so think about like the seeds that it's growing so let me go in and ask and i'm just returning to that idea of the 15 minute interview that i talked about earlier and of course that could be the same form i'm just going to do two quick um you know maybe two quick hour long or three three hour long focus groups online focus groups because i need to try and get a broad sense of how people are feeling i need to get a broad sense of of how i should act on something or bounce some ideas off and once you have those answers uh it might raise some more questions or you might think okay so we know that's not the path to go down so i want to go down another path so really thinking about research as an iterative process which is something that we we do anyway we have this continual feedback loop i think now more than ever i've talked about best practices talked about the time that we're in i think that now more than ever uh iterating you know just just going out getting some knowledge finding out what's working, what's not working, whatever is appropriate to the, the questions that you have, the topics that you have, the industry that you're in, and then just continually building upon that, uh, going back in to ask, just to keep asking. I think that's gonna see us well uh, at, at this time and as we, we come out of this time. So don't forget to iterate. Um, don't forget we can be nimble. This is the great thing about online platforms, particularly online focus groups and interviewing. We can, we can be nimble, we can be flexible. We can have those conversations anytime, anywhere conversations. So with that, I am going to, I'm sure you're, you're excited to see some of the things that, that Mike's going to show in terms of interviews, showing those screen shares, showing uh, the different scenarios of, of how it could be set up. So with that, I'm going to stop sharing. And I'm going to hand it over to Mike, who's going to be um, showing us what it looks like. And I will also be looking at your questions as Mike comes on. Great, thank you, Zoe. Thank you for the recap. It's, it's me again. Hopefully everybody can, can see me on screen here. Um, and, and as you may have noticed, I've, I'm screen sharing our interview platform. Um, and that's the, the screen that you'll see here, all the different layouts that I'll be going through. Um, so, I'll be going through a quick overview of our interview platform capabilities and, and service offering to, to give a better understanding of how this type of methodology is supported and, and executed, especially when working with us uh, here at Focus Vision. Um, for that, I'll be bringing you through uh, a series of layouts with different configurations. You can see this layout toolbar here with the different items that I'll be showing you today uh, to give you an idea of how flexible the platform is. Uh, because as, as Zoe mentioned, uh, in your presentation, it's it's completely customizable to fit your needs and sprinkling in some creativity, uh, you can really create a very engaging session online. Um, you can run a you can run a simple focus group, a virtual face-to-face -face meeting, like what you see here, like I'm doing, um, or you can go into more detailed exercises like message sorting or story building if, if your research calls for it. Um, you can even run a meeting that has no webcams at all. Uh, that's something that a lot of our clients ask, how can you, uh, I really want to get this, this remote feedback from, from customers, but maybe they don't want to be on webcam or it's not appropriate for, for this research, et cetera. We can do all of the, the exercises and, and meeting room functionalities uh, within our interview platform without webcams as well. So it's not a requirement to be on webcam, but of course people like to get the face-to-face the, uh, the -face interaction. Um, so, all of the different exercises and things that I'll be showing you is going to be built and programmed by the interview team, the project management team. So you're going to have support in any different variations of setups that you want, very standard setup, uh, very detailed exercises and stimuli, um, or, or non-webcam setups. Uh, your, your product management team will be there uh, with you throughout. Before I move on to these other layouts that you see here, uh, I just want to give you a perspective of actually what you're looking at, uh, besides just a very large image of myself on screen. Um, this is the view that the response will have during the meeting. 
Um, it's also the view of the recording that you're going to that you're going to get after your interview sessions have concluded, um, which comes with the ability to view and download the entire research day. You can download individual sessions audio files from our recording. Um, you can request video synced transcripts. So you click on a part of the transcript that you find um, interesting, and it'll jump right to that part of the video. And you can also create clips um, you know, of important parts of the research to put into a presentation. So you can think of, I like to, I like to outline this, this platform, uh, explain this platform a lot of ways in, as a virtual facility, right? Um, you have a virtual front room, which is what you're seeing now. And you also have a virtual back room where the moderator, client viewers, your live interview technician are going to be able to see everyone that's logged in, have group and private chats with one another, um, and also make live marks that can be quickly found in the archive uh, to highlight uh, key moments of the live session. And that's all out of the view of the respondents, um, which I'll be showing you this virtual back room here in a few minutes after I go through a couple of these exercises. So I saw a couple questions coming through about, uh, about group meetings. So once again, this is just a big picture of myself here. So to transition just to a, uh, an example of what a group may look like, uh, in our platform, you can see here that we have uh, six people on camera here. Um, the more people you put on webcam, or as more people come on webcam, they get, um, they get sectioned off into this type of Brady Bunch type view that you see here. And we found that keeping groups around four to six is ideal, um, especially with feedback coming from moderators as well, because it allows them to navigate through their materials at an efficient pace, but it's still getting valuable time and input from each respondent. So I also saw a question come through um, regarding how do you know who's speaking or are you able to, to clearly see who's speaking uh, during a group session? So of course they're gonna be on webcam, but say for example, um, there's a couple people speaking over one another, or they have similar voices. We also have a feature that will highlight the speaker. You'll have a blue glow around a person that's speaking because we do integrate the audio for each webcam view. So now with this view here, everyone's the same size, but we also have the ability to show a film strip view. So now you can have all of your participants, moderators and everyone down in a smaller view, but you can highlight one person as an active speaker or, or a key speaker during a certain time. This is something that can be toggled by the moderator, by your technician, all on demand. And you can toggle back and forth between that Brady Bunch view and this film strip view, as we call it. Okay, so now when you're introducing stimuli into your meeting, I'll go ahead and bring up an example of that. Now I'm back on screen live. Um, so when introducing stimuli into your, into your platform, you have various options. In this view here, I have a PDF file that's uploaded, but you're also able to upload all different types of files, such as uh, image files like PNG and JPEG files, um, PDF as you see here, PowerPoints, video files, audio files. Um, and your options are pretty much limitless with the screen sharing capability that Zoe mentioned earlier. Um, the, the, the really cool thing about any stimuli that you're sharing within the interview platform is that even with the screen share, you have the ability to use our draw tools, which you can see here. So now you can have respondents circle things, highlight things, enter text, shapes, stamps onto the document. So it really creates, um, it really enhances the insight and the feedback that you can get on a certain piece of stimuli as opposed to just getting verbal feedback. Um, and something else, since everything is recorded that you're doing here, all of the markups and exercises that you're doing are gonna be part of your video archive, um, but also your live interview technician that's part of your meetings is going to be taking screenshots of all of the completed exercise that you do. So you'll have, you'll have a physical file of all the markups from each respondent so you can use that in your review as well. One of the things with the different types of file formats is it may be beneficial to use different file types for different stimuli or exercises. Um, that's something that your project manager will consult with you uh, when building your room. And, and one of the examples here is that with a PDF that we're looking at here, a PDF gives you the ability to zoom in and out. So now if you want to have the response focus on a certain aspect of a, uh, a logo or packaging or fine print, you're able to drive that or you can even give them control to navigate, zoom, and pan around on a document as well, because everything within interview is permission-based. 
when looking at this type of uh, digital research, research methodology, there's a lot of variables that come to mind in terms of how best to accomplish your research goals or, or how it translates to this online space, but also how is it gonna be managed, right? There, there could be a lot of moving parts depending on the, the research you're trying to accomplish. And that's really where the interview team uh, comes into play and allows you to focus on the research and not the technology or the setup. Um, starting from the online booking form that we have to book your project all the way through live project support for each session, uh, we're there to support you every step of the way. Our coordination team uh, will work with your team to keep the schedule updated, right? If you're adding new days, uh, rescheduling respondents, we know that uh, the, with the flexibility of an online um, research methodology, that's, that people use that flexibility to schedule meetings um, and reschedule meetings. So our team's gonna be working with you and your recruiters to make sure that they're uh, scheduled properly and also set up properly to participate in the online. We also have a product management team that's going to, as I mentioned, consult, train, and perform practice runs with your moderator and research team uh, to ensure that they're completely comfortable with, with navigating through this online space. And then also we're going to have that live interview product technician that I mentioned earlier that's logged into your meeting room starting one hour prior to the start of your session and is going to be with you throughout every session throughout the day. So those technicians are there to ensure that the respondents get into the meeting room on time, that they're set up properly with their technology, and they'll assist the moderator with as much as he or she wants in driving the session via these preloaded layouts that your product manager would have built with you. So the moderator can just simply say, let's take a look at the uh, video. The technician can bring it up for you. So we really try to take off the technical aspect uh, from the team. To help ensure that the respondents are prepared for their online meeting as well, we developed proprietary applications and workflows to ensure that there's uh, but it's very easy for them to test their system and access their meeting. We work with all different types of respondents in our online platform. Um, so we have people that are very tech savvy and can probably build an online platform to people that uh, we're shipping webcams to them because they don't have a webcam. It's also a part of our service. So one of the things that, that we really worked on is building a very simple to follow test and setup process for our respondents. We also wanted to give visibility into the client team and the recruiter on how their respondents are doing, because that was a very common question that would come up is, have my respondents tested? Are they prepared for their session? Um, so one thing that we did, and I'll bring up a, a screenshot of this as well, is we developed this Project Central page. So now the research team and the recruiter are able to log into their project, see all of their respondents that are listed, when we sent them an invitation, if we ship them a webcam, if they tested, if they passed. So now they're reassured that, okay, John S needs to be reached out to, we need to make sure he has his webcam, maybe some people need to be rescheduled. So they have direct visibility into how they're, they're set up for their meeting. One of, the, one of the items that we did with the response also is they receive a unique invitation with a single URL that will confirm their system is compatible with interview and test their webcam. So there's not multiple links for them to juggle, to lose, et cetera. Um, so this also allows us to hard code each response name in our system so we can add another level of security um, using aliases, first name and last name only, because with some online platforms when you log in or your respondents log in, they're able to type in their full name and everyone's able to see that. So we hard code all of that to remove any PII concerns that may be coming through uh, their online meeting. Okay, if I move on to another layout here, this is a very, this is a very common exercise that we use in a lot of our meetings, which is um, a polling pod. So you'll see here that I have, um, I have a piece of stimuli with some images on the screen and also a polling pod underneath. Um, so this, you can really layer multiple exercises into uh, a single layout if you like as well, where once again, respondents can draw, circle, highlight, um, different items, but also you can ask more of a quantitative element using some of our, our polling pods here. This is an example of a multiple choice question. So respondents can come in and select one answer only, but then we also have the ability to ask uh, multiple uh, answers. So select all that apply or even short answers. So open-ended questions can be filtered in here as well. The great thing about using the polling pod is that during the, um, during the meeting, the client viewers and the moderator can actually see who voted for what. So you can kind of probe deeper, uh, as I was mentioning earlier, on certain, uh, certain responses. 
without directly calling out somebody. Uh, you'll know where to go or guide the conversation. And none of this is visible to the respondents. So they cast their vote. You can broadcast the results, which will allow them to see what the group thinks to make it a more engaging conversation. But they're not able to see who voted for what during the session. All of this polling information is uh, sent to the client team after the product is over. Um, and they have all of that, uh, every question that was asked, each respondent's individual answers for their analysis after the project as well, not only for the live. Okay, another piece of stimuli that we mentioned was video. Um, this is a very common item that, the, uh, that, our, that our customers use to show quick adverts or um, some, some different types of, of video stimuli that they want to get some feedback on. And not only will it play the audio and video, which you'll see here in a few seconds, but also you're able to use those draw tools. So during a video, you can have respondents, once again, circle things, cross out things that they like, dislike, um, right on a video as well. So it's not, it's not uh, for still images or stimuli only. Another item which we talked about previously is the screen share. So this is an example of a screen share. Um, this is a website, our website that you see here. And some of the key differences between a screen share with some other platforms and with the interview platform is that you're able to share your screen as a moderator. So you can navigate through maybe a proprietary website um, or a document that you don't want to share or send to a respondent to, to mark up. So you can share these items as a moderator and then pass control to a respondent. So they never have access truly to that, uh, maybe that website that isn't live for anyone else. You can have them navigate through a test website or, or a document, as I mentioned. Um, you can also mark up the screen share, uh, like, like I mentioned previously. Um, and you can also have the, the respondents share their screen, if you like, as well, to truly see a website usability exercise or, or different variations of that as well. Everything is recorded and archived, so you can navigate and follow along with the screen share, what they clicked on, where they went, um, and any markups that you made while you paused the website. So now jumping into some of those more robust exercises, which is something that comes up quite often uh, to us, is how do we translate that in-person research methodology that we're doing, or exercise rather, into this online space? A very common one is an image sort that you see here. This is a very, very general idea of, of how we can accomplish a, uh, an image sort. So say this may be the ending slide or layout that you went through with your respondents where you looked at each one of these covers in a PDF format. They were able to zoom in, look at some details, some of the finer things, uh, the more granular items, and now they land on this, this last page where now you can have them use some of these draw tools. These are the stamps that we have as well. And they just simply click and drag. It's an interactive exercise. It keeps them engaged. They can see things moving around on screen, what they want to move. And once again, it's all recorded. And screenshots are taken so you have part of this um, for your, your analysis at the end. Along the, same, along the same idea is a variation of a word sort. So here's a very basic example of a word sort and how you can accomplish that inside of our meeting room as well. This here, we have a keep and discard uh, pile, just like in a facility. So you have a bunch of names or words or ideas, pictures, and you want to move them around on screen to a keep and discard pile. So I preloaded some of these uh, fruits. I thought it was pretty relevant with being at home. My son eats a lot of fruit, so these were top of mind for me. Um, and you can simply have the response click and drag these items. So once again, it's interactive, you're watching them do it in real time, their thought process, which one they pick first, because that may be a telling sign as well. So once this is over, you can move on to the next slide, you can build a story throughout this where the technician would help you as well. So maybe you wanna keep the keep items moving down throughout the research or throughout the session. So maybe you end at, the, at a layout at the, at the tail end of the meeting where all of the keep items from the fruits, the vegetables, et cetera, are all in one pile and you can build that story a little more. Um, so once again, this is just another example of some of the exercises that we can do within the platform. Now, before we move on, uh, like I mentioned, I wanted to show you the virtual back room to show you what that client side and the moderator side will look like because what we've been doing and what I've been doing here, even though I've been driving, is the view of the recording 
and the respondent view. So what I'll go ahead and do is show you the virtual back room on the right hand side. And you can see that's always visible to a client and a moderator. So just another thing before we go over the, the separate items is that a, uh, a client or a moderator, if they don't want to see the back room, not pay attention to the chat, they can move it out of the way. It's completely independent for their own, uh, their own screen. So you're not going to interrupt anybody else in the view. But looking at some of these items in the virtual back room, you have the attendee list here. So everyone's able to see everyone that's logged into the meeting room, whether that be the technician, the moderator, client viewers, or the respondents that are in the room. Once again, the names are, are hard-coded with uh, no PII, so they can't see the respondents' names. And the respondents cannot see anything that's in this back room. It's also not recorded. So any chat that's happening privately is not going to be recorded or part of the archive. But in everyone chat, where you're having a group chat, uh, you can see here maybe ask some probing questions. Um, go through some of the uh, go through some of the workflow that you want to accomplish during the meeting. Go back to certain questions. All of that can happen in this client chat out of the view of the respondents. And it's one of the main differences between in facility research, right? With the this virtual virtual front room and virtual back room, virtual facility, um, the client viewers and research team are actually able to send follow-up questions and probing questions to the moderator in real time. So the moderator's watching this chat, or they can close it and not watch it per se, um, but if they, they're watching it, they can follow up with questions that are coming in real time. The last bit here is the interview live marking pod. This is also something that we built and developed here um, at Focus Vision, which ties directly to our archive and the recording that we will provide you after each day. So you're watching the session live, something very important comes up, a, a very good comment, something you want to go back and reference, but you don't want to skim through that hour long session to try to find it again. You're able to, during the live, just click on create a mark, important, put a mark, and now when you watch your recording, you'll see that you put that mark in there, click on it, it brings you back to that part of the recording uh, where that was referenced. So once again, that was a very quick overview um, of, our, of our interview platform. Um, there's a lot more exercises and flexibility and bells and whistles that we can build and help uh, build for your specific research needs, but this should give a pretty good idea of, of what we're able to accomplish uh, with our platform. So with that, I believe we'll open it up for any questions. Yeah, thank you, Mike. And we have so many questions. Um, I'm going to do my best for us to get through what we can in the next 10 minutes because that's the time we've got remaining we will follow up so if we don't get your questions please there, there will be a follow-up i'm going to try and group them in different buckets as well um i'm going to the first one i'm going to start with is is let's start there's been plenty of questions around zoom why are we even using zoom for our webinar not this platform as well as how does zoom you know we can do some of these these capabilities in zoom so let me kick off as why we're using you know, Zoom's great as a webinar platform. Uh, we've got uh, several hundred people on, on here, um, and that's why we're using it. Interview is for, it's a research platform. Um, it's, it can be used absolutely to do this type of thing with, with smaller groups, but it's group size. But that was why we're, we're using Zoom. Um, Mike, I think, I mean, I'll give my, my just top of mind thoughts on, on Zoom or other free tools. Yes, there's capabilities around screen share, there, there are things that you absolutely can do with, with uh, numerous platforms available. I mentioned at the beginning about security. That is, is fundamental to know, you know, are, are the people coming in, is the session going to be secure? And then also is your recording going to be secure? So that's one, one big aspect of it for me. The other thing is just the, the amount of capabilities that actually the amount of features and hopefully this became apparent as Mike as Mike took it, uh, as through what, what you can do with an interview, but there are numerous different capabilities and features that are, do have that research focus that you can do within the platform. And then I will also say one of those is of course the back room that, that we, we're seeing on, on screen here and the ability to, to connect uh, with people, have that back room, there's the view for the moderator and then there's also the view for the participants. So Mike, I'm not sure if there's anything else you would, you would build on. Absolutely. No, that's, that's a great recap and, and definitely a lot of thoughts that I would have as well. Um, one of the things that we can't stress enough is the, the live support and the pre-project planning and, and ex in the execution, right? Um, we, have, we have clients that also have Adobe Connect licenses. So the platform, if you remove the service component, they'll come to us and ask, what's the best practices in doing it this way? How, are, how is it supported? How can you help us run it? 
And there's other things that we didn't get to in this demo, such as two-channel audio, right? If you're having simultaneous translation of product in German, but you want your clients to listen in English, that's something that we can support as well. So there's a lot more to just a platform, say, uh, and capabilities, which Zoom and others don't have all of the research-minded uh, aspects to it. Uh, that should go into your decision making for in online uh, research. Okay, great. Okay, so I saw a lot of questions around. Um, okay, let me start with the one we did kind of cover this. Uh, so around group size, but actually also group length. Mm -hmm. um, I know you covered that, Mike, and I think I agree completely that you know four to six is really where you want to be. For myself, and this is just my preference, I prefer to be more in that four five. Yeah. side as opposed to the six um there's there is a lot going on and to get people engaged and making sure that everybody's got the the opportunity to participate i find a little bit of the smaller size that four or five is 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 preferable and again that might be my preference um but i do think smaller is better there is a question on on length um i think it depends for, for me again it just depends what are you trying to ask what are you trying to cover in that session so it's one of those again where don't try and you know t take an hour and then and then squeeze everything into that because that's right. it's just not going to be achievable. So it's really balancing the time that you're you're scheduling with your participants. You know, are you doing that hour? Are you doing that hour and a half? Um, and and balancing that with with how much you want to ask. So I don't know if there's anything you would build there, Mike. Yeah, no, I mean just from our experience and, and a lot of our client meetings, uh, customer meetings, we see. Focus groups typically go the 90 minute mark, I would say is the, the most, uh, most common. Okay. All right. So another question that I saw come up so many times is that around the, the participant exercises. Yeah. So you showed a lot around uh, the, um, the, the view on, I see that there's lots of requests to see us talking. I'm quite happy to turn on my webcam so that I'm here. Mike, if you don't mind do, doing the same. Sure. Um, oh, Rachel, I'm going to need you to, to start our webcam. Um, so the, the respond exercises. Yes, that was so many questions that actually came through. Um, the, can, we, can we have a discussion around what do other participants see when, like a polling exercise, um, and that might be a good example, and another one might be a screen markup. What happens when multiple people are, you know, is everybody's doing this at once and they do separate screens? What's going on there? Sure. Yeah. Very common question. Um, because a lot of the, a lot of the very detailed uh, markups, highlighting, et cetera, that you're doing live, that everyone saw me doing live, um, everyone's seeing that live, right? So when you add more participants into it, how do you make it an uninfluenced type exercise? So you, you, you hit the nail on the head with one of the, one of the approaches, which is using a polling pod which is completely blinded to the respondents. They can't see anybody else's responses uh, into it unless the moderator were to broadcast the results. And then once again, they're only seeing the, the percentages or the amount of votes to keep the conversation going. But in terms of the markups or the drag and drop exercises that we saw there, the Adobe Connect platform, the interview platform that we have here has the ability to uh, conduct breakout rooms. Um, so if you have a group, uh, like you mentioned, of, of four to five people, um, we're able to, at a certain point of the meeting, put them into their own meeting room, into their own essentially meeting room, and have them do those exercises, complete them, and then come back to the group. And the moderator is able to bring up the individuals and see them, or they can keep them uh, hidden from the other responders. So that would be accomplished. The, the drawing exercises that you saw there would be accomplished with a breakout room with the smaller groups. Okay. And again, I think that that goes back to if you're doing things like that, then you are thinking about how long am I going to run this group for? How many people do I want to have that in? Because it is, that's a, it's adding a lot of complexity, not just for the participant, for yourself as well as the moderator. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. And that's something, once again, the product manager uh, will go through all of the variations. What's the, is polling more appropriate and go through the paces with you and go through a complete dry run with the moderator make sure maybe we should go with polling or maybe breakout rooms make sense. So that's kind of the consultative side of it as well. Okay, great. Um, I see we've got about four minutes. Um, people, I, I love the questions. There's like over a hundred here. So I'm trying really hard to, to, to go through. We will follow up. There will be more. We'll, we'll have another session like this. I think there's definitely a need for it. So forgive me, but we don't get to, to, to all of them. I'm trying to group. Um, I think uh, an interesting one for me, I'd, in the tips and tricks, 
you know, I suggest people do this, you know, raise your hand. There's of course also the raise hand function in, in uh, end view. My, my view, and Mike, I'd be curious to see what you've seen and heard. My view is that um, A, as a moderator, what are you comfortable with? Uh, what, what are you looking for? And also B, who are your participants? Some people might prefer to do this, others might prefer to, to click. And it, um, so I would kind of go in between the two, um, yep. like what's the participant's preference? Um, but I, but I kind of do like the hand waving. You know. Yeah, and and you know a lot of that is moderator driven, as you mentioned. Some prefer to do it one way versus the other, and and like you mentioned in the beginning, um, you know, kind of breaking the ice or or building the rapport. Sometimes the moderator before the group even starts, they have a kind of uh, uh, conducting the meeting type slide, right? Hey, when we have questions, raise your hand or use this icon or do it this way. So they kind of set the ground rules before the meeting, so everyone's on the same page and not doing yeah. kind of their own thing. Hmm? Yeah. No, nope, that makes a lot of sense. Um, I just trying to see if I can group. We, we've answered things about private response. Maybe that's something we'll, we'll want to go over again and just have the responses um, go in, in another session. I'm just seeing so many of these kind of questions going on. I mean, a great question. I'll just pause on this one. How do we, is there a way to make sure that participants don't download, screenshot, record what we're sharing? My yeah, no, something comes up a lot. Yeah, no, that's that's a very common question. So, so there's there's two things. One is um, one is that one of the things that we do with very sensitive materials is a client may want to during the recruitment do an NDA and things like that with the respondent. But also within interview, when they log into the meeting room, our technician can display an NDA with them, have them accept it. Uh, so you have a, an electronic copy of them agreeing to the NDA, which says you know no screenshots, etc. Um, but in terms of a screen share or screenshot functionality, if a response intent is to take it off of the screen, they could have a camera somewhere and things like that. So it's just part of the methodology um, and, and ensuring that your NDAs are, are, uh, you know, are, are set out with the response before the meeting. Yeah. Mm -hmm. with, with, and again, so, so everything that you possibly can do to prevent that is, is um, done. We, we tried to do it on our side and, and you'll do it on yours. Mm -hmm. um, there's no, there's, you know, people, people are people. And if they really wanted to, that's what they would do one way or the other. Um, but, but on the whole, again, this goes back to why people participating in the research. Is there something that, uh, that they feel the value in? And um, it's, you know, that's, that is just something that we, we come up with against. Okay. Last couple of questions. Um, what, what shall I focus in on? Uh, I know there's been a lot of questions about pricing. Uh, this is something I've, um, that I hate these questions. I know, well, sorry, I hate this answer that I'm going to give, which is it just depends. One thing I will say is unlike a focus group facility, like a, you know, face face where you book it for, for half a day or for a day, this is per hour. So um, that, that means that you can just do that hour group or that hour and a half. So it's per hour, but please, we will, we will get our, um, your, your sales rep, our, our sales rep to, to get in touch with you to talk about those. Again, it just depends on what you're looking to do. Um, I know there was also questions around recruiting. Mike, do you want to talk about how we can, we can help there? Sure. We have recruitment partners that we work with that are very familiar with the technology, the screening questions, et cetera, to make sure that they're, they're selecting participants and going through the, the right questions with them um, that we work very closely with that we can recommend, say. Um, but our coordination team work very closely with the recruitment partners to we, uh, to obtain the respondents, send in their invitations, work with them. Um, so in terms, of the, in terms of the recruitment piece, uh, that's where we rely on, once again, our partners. But the benefit there is that you as a customer, if you are familiar with working with a certain vendor for your recruitment, we can work with them as well. It's not, you're, not, uh, you're not held to our recruitment firm or our partners. We can work with any recruitment firm that's needed. Even you as a customer, if you do your own recruitment panel, we can work with you as well. So basically, there's lots of lots of different options we can follow. Lots of options, and we would provide you all and any and all questions that you would have in terms of what the system requirements or what screener questions. We would give you a handful of questions that you could just plug right into your screener uh, for any responding type to be able to participate. Okay, great. Look, yeah. and we've we've got to wrap up. I I feel like there's so <laughs> many questions that we haven't got to. So as I say, I think we will have a follow up session for sure. A uh, couple of other things. Um, Oh, I had it right in front of me and I've forgotten because uh, I'm trying to think of so many options, but um, we, we can help. Uh, there's a lot of technical support. Let's follow up those questions. I think there's also questions about pricing. So again, we'll, we'll put people in touch with you around that. 
I hope we've answered the questions around Zoom and how we're different from Zoom and, and other technologies like that. I hope you can see that there's a lot of features to make use of, um, which I will also say sometimes can be overwhelming when it's the first thing that you're looking at. So I'm going to put uh, end this with maybe a, you know, if you're just trying this out, you know, feel free to just start with some of the, you know, just a webcam conversation, you know, and, and see how that goes. There was, the, here's the question that I remember. Yes, do we do demos um, if you want to take it to a client because they want to see? Absolutely. So again, that's something, we get in touch, we, we can arrange something that is personalized to yourself. With that, thank you everybody so much for joining. Thank you, Mike, for joining me this morning, to, uh, well, my morning. Um, it's been great having everybody. Really appreciate the questions and the engagement and we'll be sure to follow up. So thank you and have a good rest of the day. Thank you all. Bye-bye.